oh, you know, I thought our overall energy and effort was there. Um, we struggled defensively at times, and I thought that third quarter, uh, the second unit really kind of gave us a little separation. And they did a terrific job on both sides, moving the ball, you know, continuing to uh, generate easy offense for uh, for each other, um, and did a pretty good job defensively. I mean, overall, you know, we knew going in this team was going to be a tough out. They, they're playing exceptionally well. They uh, playing with a lot of confidence, their physicality. Um, but you know, two, the two areas, of course, we you know we, we got to clean up the turnovers and offensive rebounds. It's been consistent over the last three games, and thankfully, they didn't burn us this, you know tonight. In the second half, especially, there were a lot of big runs, a lot of big swings. I mean, what's the key to staying involved in a game where you you know allow a ten point or allow a ten point run, go on an eighteen and zero run yourself? How how do you stay involved in a game like that? Well, it, you know, it, it's under, you have to understand the flow of it. Right. You know, where you may have one or two possessions. You know, it's a broken play. You may generate a decent look; it doesn't go. Um, but you can't have two or three consecutive poor possessions. Now, obviously, you got to get stops, you got to rebound. But offensively, uh, we got to just make sure that you know you stay organized um, and, and we execute. Yeah, everything's got to be with purpose. You know, the, we have to value those possessions because uh, we don't have a ton of shot creation. So you know, we got to move it. You know, find the find the open guy and, and let the ball. Uh, you know, create that energy. If, if not, you know, become, it becomes static. It gets really difficult. So we just have to continue to stay with it, you know, and, and good things usually happen. Rui went three of three from deep tonight. I mean, what do you like about the way that he's kind of shot the three ball over the last month? I think he's at like 68% since February 1st. The, his confidence, you know, it's, you know, I've said this before, it's, you know, he's confident in his shot. He works on it. Uh, his teammates are confident. You know, they'll, they'll look to find him. And he's shot ready, he spaces correctly. You know, when you, when you do those two things, the ball finds you, I, you know, I'd, I'd like you to continue to shoot it. You know, it's, um, it's a great sign for us, but also to see his maturity in the game and see that he's added, you know, another layer. Looking at his big picture and his ceiling or his future in the league, how important is this additional dimension that he's, you know, no one expects anybody to shoot 53% over the course. I do. Point. <laughs> but to be a reliable three-point shooter, how does it change? Yeah, no, that's it changes, you know, a lot of things. You know, uh, I think it's, you know, an added dimension in most teams defensively when they're guarding him, you know, they're, they're not accustomed to that. So right now it's new, and I think, you know, if he continues, and I obviously don't, con I think he'll continue to shoot at that, um, you know, at that rate. But, you know, if you're a, a high 30s, you know, low 40s, that's that's a really good three-point shooter. Uh, the best part about it is they're catch and shoot. They're open looks. Uh, once again, when he's spaced correctly, the ball finds him. Um, it, it's in rhythm. He's not trying to shoot it off the bounce. He's not trying to, uh, you know, do too much in that regard. So it's the right types of threes, um, and, you know, especially below the break. He, you know, he's shooting it from the corners at a really high clip. So I would continue to urge him to keep shooting them. How much do you enjoy the, uh, I don't know if luxury is the word, but the versatility that Sadoransky provided, particularly late in the game? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's kind of what I envision with his size, ability to switch. Um, you know, he, he's bigger than you think, and he, he's obviously, he's a smart player. Um, he had a couple of big possessions on offense. Obviously, the free throw is late. Um, but even defensively, staying in front of guys and on the glass, he didn't necessarily get the credit for the rebounds, but he had a couple of, uh, you know, tips where he kept the ball out of the, uh, you know, out of Stewart's hands. And th those are big plays. Uh, so um, having that flexibility to go to another guy who, once again, can orchestrate your offense, um, can switch down the line, keep size on size, uh, and does a pretty good job moving his feet and keep the, body, keep a, keep the ball in front, I think it's a, definitely a luxury. Wes, how much do you envision Sato playing alongside Howell and Ish the way he did tonight? What did you like about that combination? Uh, I mean, all those things that, you know, we just touched on, but um, it takes some pressure off of having a primary ball handler initiate the offense every possession. Um, you know, you want to get off of it to get it back. You got to shift the defense a little bit. But when you have a secondary ball handler out there, um, you know, it gives you another guy besides Denny, besides Coos that, you know, you play second side pick and roll or, you know, chase action and you, you feel pretty comfortable that guy's going to make the right read. Um, it just gives you more flexibility and allows you, um, you know, a, another guy who can get downhill a little bit. 
you mentioned shot production. Do you have to be kind of careful with how you deploy those three guys? At least from watching my watching them, they're not exactly the most like shoot first type of point guards. Do you have to be wary of that? Or are you are you kind of a, the opinion? Well, if they'll move the ball, something's going to happen. Uh, no, I think the uh, you, you want to have those you know at least two ball handlers on the floor. You know, ideally, um, and of course, Denny. You know, he, he kind of took a little bump couldn't come back in the game. So that once again, opened up another opportunity for, for Sato. Uh, but you're mindful of, you know, the teams are going to go under on Ish and, and Hole. Uh, they might not guard them. You know, I still want them to take their space correctly. And, you know, the ball finds them, take the right shots. Um, but, you know, you do have to have that balance, you know, whether it's pick and roll, catch and shoot, um, you know, attacking closeouts, or a little bit of post-ups, the mixture and having that balance offensively is important seen an increase in scoring from Daniel Gafford. Is that just a matter of him playing more minutes or is there something else he's doing? Uh, I, mean, you know, I haven't really looked at exactly how many more minutes he's played. Um, but, you know, I think his, his finishing has gotten better. Um, uh, I wish he'd make some free throws tonight, but uh, I, he, he's, he's working on it, you know, and it's not post-ups or, you know, he's not trying to do too much, but, you know, learning how to play angles. You know, he's going to play through contact. He gets to the line, but catching traffic, you know, carve out some space and finish. That's a big part of the game. Um, and if he's going to be a dynamic roller, it's not always going to be lob. Uh, so finding that, you know, that sweet spot in, in, uh, in the paint, being able to finish in those areas is important. Ruby passed up some three-point opportunities in the first half today. Did you address any of that? Or no, no. I think it's, you know, the only thing I said, and I said to the group, it wasn't, you know, specifically to him, is just be quick with our decisions. You know, and then we've talked about that point five mentality. You know, if, if you got an open look within the confines of what we're doing, shoot it. Uh, if it's a rhythm shot, let it go. Uh, otherwise, you, you know, read the defense. If they close out, drive it. If not, get off of it. I think, though, you know, it, it sounds real simplistic, but when we catch and we hold, all you're allowing to do is, uh, is, is you're allowing the defense to set again. And, you know, you want to keep them moving. And now you can, get, you know, attack angles. It opens up space, and hopefully that generates something good. Wes, the way you guys took the lead back late in the fourth, it was I think it was after Kuz and KCP missed their threes, and then Thomas had that nice dunk. KCP drives the layup. How you talk so much about being purposeful and aggressive, especially late, is that kind of the stuff that you're talking about where it's like, okay, take the threes, sure, settle for the jumpers, but you have to kind of attack when that's not working? Yeah, no, you, you have to have that balance. Uh, we don't want to just you know think we're going to hoist threes and outscore teams. You know, We don't shoot it well enough. At the same time, you know, we don't have too many guys who can play off the bounce and just beat their own guy. So there has to be, you know, that mix, but also, you know, we have to move the defense. Now, when you get opportunities, we, we defend and we rebound, we're pretty good in the open floor. So, you know, I think that, that that's an easy one. Let's get out and run, um, you know, attack the paint, you know, and hopefully find the threes in the corners. But um, just having that balance, um, that balance comes with also reading the flow. First of all, just what do you think made the difference for you guys tonight? Uh, tonight? Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, the second half, um, especially the, um, it was like end of the third quarter. Uh, we had a good run. Um, off, our defense, we, we were getting stopped and uh, we were making shot. On the other hand, uh, I think that there was a big difference. And I know we've asked you about your improved three-point shot, but over your last eight games, you're 15 of 20. Uh, what can you just say about the run you're on right now? I'm just like, being confident, um, shooting, you know, I, I just like to shoot like practice, you know, that's what I do. I know in the practice I shoot, uh, I do like, you know, the game, like, you know, like game shots and that's why, you know, I've been doing it like for this whole season. So yeah, just, that's why I think, yeah. Wes kind of mentioned that confidence too. I mean, how much does that confidence build game over game just as you continue the streak that you're on? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's just like in the, our chemistry too, you know. Uh, we we sharing the ball right now. Uh, we we in a good good, uh, good pace, and we always have like everybody touching the ball, uh, sharing the ball. So it's it, there's a good um, ball moving. So um, it makes the shooter easy to shot, uh, you know, like open shot. Rui, in terms of your. Uh, growth priorities, your priorities for improvement this offseason, where did shooting the three ball rank? Uh, what do you mean? 
was it the top priority that you were seeking to improve on yeah. during the off season or were there other elements to oh your... yeah for sure yeah three points yeah for sure i worked on a lot of three points and during the season to during the season i shoot i practice a lot of threes and the practice so yeah that's a that was all i think the main main one for sure the top one how would you compare your rhythm and your conditioning now to when you first came back? Uh, it's pretty good, um, especially we just came out um, from All Star break, so uh, everybody's fresh now, uh, fresh out, and uh, me too. Like you know, I was just I'm um, in a good condition, so yeah. And how would you hope to build off of the three point shooting that you've done now? Uh, you know, a lot of catch and shoot plays. Is what are kind of the next steps as you become an even better three point shooter? Oh, uh, I mean, I just keep walking on, you know. Uh, same stuff and uh, it's actually three points is not my game so you know uh, mid-range is my game so um, I gotta get back to my uh, mid-range game too you know I haven't really made uh, mid-range so yeah that's gonna that's gonna be my next goal for sure Neil Hey, Roy, you're obviously very selective with the three-point shots that you do take. What are some of the things, you know, in the moment that you're assessing, okay, do I shoot it, do I drive it, do I pass it, things like that? Uh, most of the time it's catch and shoot. So, you know, I just feel it's momental, you know, we're in a good rhythm, uh, ball movements, and just make a, you know, easy shot. So nothing really. Like, we practice, like, you know, those kind of good to great shot and stuff. So... That was a, those are all the practice stuff that we've been doing it. Thanks, Ray. Christos? Hey, Rui, congratulations on the win, first of all. How many steps on the right direction for you was that win? And how important is to be effective coming off the bench, be effective on both ends and help your team to win? Uh, say it again. How many steps in the right direction was that win? And how important for you is to be effective on both ends, coming off the bench and be effective for uh, your team? Yeah, just trying to be aggressive in the both ends, you know. Uh, defensively, um, tonight I had a cheap fire, a couple of cheap fires, so I got to fix that. But yeah, I just, uh, I just trying to be aggressive more on uh, both ends. And yeah, that's to uh, bring a good energy, you know. That's what I'm always uh, thinking about when I come off from the bench. I think we played really collective and really locked into what we had at hand. And, um, you know, just seeing those games that we lost that were super close to us. And we didn't want this one slipping away when we got back home. What can you say about the effort from the bench that you were obviously a part of? Well, I think our effort was great. Um, I think for all of us, we really tried to lock in and really try to help that first group and try to maintain the league, if not gain a lead back when we go in there. So we really tried to hold ourselves to that standard. Thomas, can you kind of take us through the the dunk that you saw there at the end after, I think it was after KCP's layup in the fourth. Oh, shoot, man. Come on, it was a big dunk. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it, uh, no, it was, it was big. Um, I'm really happy Neto saw me right there running the lane right there. Uh, that was a big one for us and um, a big dunk for me. So I was really happy about it, you know, just seeing that defensive play that Kuz made right then and there to get that block for us to to get us out there in transition really helped us really. I haven't been around for a couple of weeks, but so I'm sorry if you've been asking no, this fine. already, but for this kind of last chunk of the season, how are you viewing this in terms of opportunity for you to either get your legs back and to prove what you can do? Like, how, how are you viewing this kind of final stretch here? Well, this final stretch, really, I'm just viewing it for myself personally is just to get better each and every day. Just try and get back to the way I was before the injury, you know, and just keep improving for us is, you know, try and build the team chemistry, the team camaraderie throughout this time right here, right here and there, and really just fight for, you know, hopefully that playoff spot in there. And then just fight for us for constant improvement. We want to build the team right here that's just really going to grow, grow with each other. What kind of boost did Rui's three-point tonight? Man, it so much of a boost, man. You know, not too many people know that Rui is such a great three-point shooter, and I feel like he doesn't realize it himself sometimes, man. <laughs> but him, him knocking down those threes, being ready to shoot, you know, any way, shape, or form out there on that court really helps us because, you know, he's a spacing matchup right there. He's a problem out there. You know, he, he gets you with the mid-range, he can get you inside, and now he can also get you with the three-point ball. That's a, that's a triple threat right there, man. That's, that's big time. <laughs>
What's your approach coming off the bench? You know, I, you know my, pro, my approach whenever, even if I'm coming off the bench or starting or anything, my, my perception is come out there with that energy, that grit and that grind, you know, and get back to the way it was before. You know, it doesn't matter if I'm coming off the bench or I'm starting or anything like that. You know, I have to hold myself accountable to the way that I play, that I know that I can play day in and day out. So it really doesn't matter if I'm like, if it's bench work or starting or anything like that, I have to go out there and do my job. I understand you have a connection to Isaiah Stewart, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's all I know. Can you tell me kind of like what that connection is? <laughs> no, that connection is that connection is 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 deeper than the surface, man. Like I know I've known Zay for a long, long time. We grew up together in Rochester, New York. Uh, I actually played against him before. I've seen him play before. We've worked out together, and just to see him in this light, in this NBA light, playing with the Detroit Pistons, being a starter at that, you know, seeing him play in the Rising Stars game, you know, seeing him get big dunks. He's a big improvement. He he improves so much from day in and day out. Like he's even big on the scouting report. So to see that, really, it's it's like a ton of joy that you really feel because not too many people can really make it out of the, where we were in Rochester, New York. And he knows. I know. Everyone knows that really knows the area and everything. So I'm really proud of him. Like, we're, like words really can't describe how proud I am of him. Neil? Hey, TB, you kind of just touched on it that you want to get back to, you know, where you were pre-injury. What are some of the things and or benchmarks where you feel like, okay, you're still approaching that? Well, I take everything that, everything in hand just going, just going is that, you know, from offensive wise to defensive wise to making sure my body is straightforward day in and day out and, you know, just getting just really train my body to get really used back into this NBA grind lifestyle. Thanks, TV. Chris Gibbs. Hey, Thomas, great game, great win, first of all. How, after those uh, two losses against the Cavaliers and the Spurs, how needed was that win mentally wise for you guys? Yeah, I think it's a big one. You know, we, um, you know, we try to not get too high or too low on the wins and the losses and just try to keep improving day in and day out. But, you know, coming back home and getting this win against Detroit, our first win back home, you know, that really helps. That really that really is a big one for us. It helps us get momentum. And speaking about your game, how, how comfortable do you feel right now, shape-wise, and how important it is to be effective coming off the bench, help your team on both ends, and be a, rim pro a great team protector? How important for you is this? Oh, well, it's very important, you know, coming off the bench or any way, shape or form, just, you know, you constantly want to go out there and try to help your team win, you know, day in and day out. Like, you don't, you, you try to make as little mistakes as possible out there on the floor. And for me, I feel great conditioning wise. Um, I feel like I have my wind under me. I do actually feel like I have my legs under me, but I can get more of them under me. You know, that comes with the training and, you know, the getting getting refigured with the, you know, NBA grind life, like I said before.